Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for May 27th, 28th, and 29th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this is just the introduction. It will be on all of the readings. So if you want to go to your reading, individual reading, just go to the timestamp below. It will bypass everything in the introduction, if it works right. Anyway, um, I will be using my Bradley Valentine, my Angel Tarot deck. I will use my John Holland Psychic Tarot deck, and I will pull one from Emily Anderson Crystal deck. That will be for all of the main readings. For this overview of what's going on in the universe per se, we're going to use my Weight Rider traditional tarot and my, one day I will remember your full name, Colette, Colette Baron Reed, the Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power, to God, Holy Spirit, and whatever comes through, I ask that those be the words of Holy Spirit, you know, higher power. Now, um, let's go on. What's going on with the planets? There's not a whole lot of movement. We have Venus um, is going into Taurus, so that's interesting in itself. That will be the, well, Venus, Venus, where are you, Venus? Venus will be going into Taurus on the 28th. It will be leaving um, Aries energy. Now, Mars is still in Aries, so that's interesting. So Venus is kind of playing a little catch me if you can. Um, also trying to get a little bit with relationships, get a little bit more earthy, more, da more grounded with the relationships. On the 30th, we do have a new moon that will be in Gemini, and that will be 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is starts new cycles. We still do have the, um, the, 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 um, you know, the passion and the, uh, you know, the really strong energies from our Scorpio full moon. So that's still pushing forward. But Gemini is going to have you thinking a little bit, uh, thinking a little bit sharper, okay? Um, Scorpio has the passion. Scorpio doesn't like lies. Scorpio wants um, what Scorpio wants. But Gemini is a little craftier. Gemini is a little bit, um, uh, you know, just a little bit smarter than, um, and I shouldn't say smarter than Scorpio. It's not that at all, but just smarter in how Gemini plays whatever the game is, okay? So, you know, Scorpio is feeling lots of feelings here. It's very strong. I feel this. I want this. And Gemini is going to use that and um, for the benefit of whoever, whatever is working with Gemini energies. Okay, new cycle, new beginnings. Now, the one thing is the plant, you know, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on. We do have Mercury that's retrograde in Taurus. So we'll have, we do have Mercury in Taurus and Venus in Taurus. So there could be some very strong, um, very grounded, very clear cut, um communications between you know between relationships between you know there's going to be some really strong um telling it as it is energies okay but again we're going into that gemini new moon and gemini is gemini is really sharp this time around i'm feeling very sharp energy with gemini now the planets themselves not a whole lot we're still we're you know we are still getting into some of those you know that downloaded energies we did have a little bit of a break but the thing about the planets is they're getting closer into an alignment it's almost like they're all chit-chatting with each other and they're trying to figure out you know who's going to work best with who and who's not so let's see what we have here let's go on for the universe to the universe to higher power um, what do we need to know for the weekend? What's happening for the weekend? And let's let's see what we have here. Let's cut. We cut it because I like to cut three times. And here, one, two, and three. Try to find a spot for me. Okay. So let's see what we've got going here. First card is, ooh, the devil. Face your fears. Face your fears, and this will this will be totally game changing energy, total game changing. Now, the devil fifteen five 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 change 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 positive negative it doesn't matter it is change 
and it can be very disruptive. But the thing is, going along the same old so, same old way has been very disruptive in this universe. Kind of just, there's an acceptance here. So you have choices. You can either accept what's going on, you can stay in bondage, or you face your fears. And with facing your fears, you can easily slip out of the chains that bind you. Now, this is more universal energies. And if you look, if you look, these chains are something that they could just slip right off their heads if they choose. Sometimes it's the devil, you know, sometimes people would choose the devil they know than the unknown. But the thing about this also is this is not a very positive energy to, if you decide to stay in this, in this energy per se. Uh, it is changing people. It is changing, you know, changing humanity in itself. But... There are, there is, there's a lot of options with this one, and one of it is face your fears if they're not as bad as you think they are, and you can slip the chains of bondage. So this weekend has a choice. Slip the chains, stay in the chains. Okay, let's see what our next card is. This is Major Arcana. Okay, now reversed. Reverse cards have a little stronger energy, a little more, you know, zap or pay attention to me. So this is the page of swords. Now, all of the court cards have like a dual energy. Page's energy is your earth energy. So that's your Capricorn, your Taurus, your Virgo energy. Okay, money, job, career. It can also be your home. Swords energy, and we remember we have Mercury in Taurus and we also have Venus in Taurus now. So relationships and communication in that earth energy. Now, sword energy is your air energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We have Saturn in Aquarius and that's still playing a lot of havoc. That's still trying to, re that's tr still trying to uncover a lot of secrets to be revealed. But we're also in that Gemini season and we're about to have that Gemini new moon. So this is making plans, thinking things through, getting news, um, hearing things, you know, hearing things. And remember, even in retrograde, um, you know, we do have a lot of things that come back to us when we're in retrograde. But the Page of Swords is, I kind of, I'm kind of getting this waiting, waiting and seeing. The winds are, are blowing a little bit. There's some, you know, you can either think of these as some birds or some bugs that are just flying around. But the wind, the wind is, is stirring up. Things are happening. Things are stirring up. They're just not ready to uh, jump into at this time. But the Page of Swords is very wide, is, is thinking things through. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, wants to get started, but he knows, she knows, it's now, it's now a waiting game. So the Page of Swords to me is waiting at the, waiting for the opportune moment to make his or her move. Next card here. This is reversed again. This is the six, six of cups, six of cups. Now six is the number of man. It is the number, it's the energy that we put into something. Now cups is our water energy, cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. Remember Scorpio full moon. Planets are leaving Pisces. Um, I think we just, we still have the one Neptune still in Pisces right now. Uh, but planets are leaving Pisces to move into some more actionable energy. So things are happening. The thing about this, this is looking back at life. This is looking back at that nicer, sweeter time. The, um, the interesting part with this one is part of this is what keeps us in this what keeps us locked up because we keep thinking oh things are going to go to a point things are going to go back to what you know to that sweeter time things are not but that page of sword is waiting that page of swords is waiting so there's a lot of nostalgia with this energy here a lot of um just you know thinking back to nicer sweeter times except they weren't as nice or as sweet as we thought they were okay but the page, the page is waiting. The page is ready. The page is waiting to move on and ready. The, it all depends on what the universe we choose to do with this energy, with the devil energy. Do we face our fears or do we just accept what we have to accept? Or not what we have to. Do we accept what, just because it's easier to accept. Uh, interesting stuff here. Interesting stuff. Let's see what... Um, Colette Baron read the good tarot has for us. 
Here we go. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, a lot of that, that double is, a lot of that is facing fears and, you know, things are, are skewed. Things are not, things are not the way we think that they are. And the thing to remember is when we, when we go with the double energy, when we stay in the double energy, we lose a lot of our humanity. We lose a lot of our compassion and our love. And we, you know, we, we tend to say, oh, let's stay to the light. I mean, let's stay out of the light. Let's stay in the dark. Dark does not like light. Okay, good tarot. What higher power? What, what do we need to know with the good tarot? What do we need to know? Here we go. Let's see. Okay, again, we have that six of water. Six of water is the same as six of cups longing for wanting to go back to a, what we thought was a sweeter time what we thought was a better time except that you know that old devil card is telling us you know it, it it's like yeah you know it, it does that devil card has a lot of um hmm. trying you know remember the devil card the devil is the trickster is not tell you know there might be a grain of truth he you know, uses a grain of truth to create an illusion. And remember, Saturn in Aquarius, illusion versus um, reality. So there's a lot of validation here. There's a lot of longing. There's a lot of nostalgia here. That page, though, is ready for some, is ready to move on. Uh, just not quite ready enough. Okay? Okay. Interesting stuff here. All right. Now, Take a moment, please, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. The one energy we did not talk about, we talked about earth, air, water. We did not talk about fire, which is our Aries, our Leo, and our Sagittarius. And remember, Jupiter's in Aries, Mars is now in Aries, something else in Aries, I can't remember. But it is all about passion, burning passion, commitment, and really, you know, going after what it is we want to go after. Okay, so why don't we start our readings now? Hello, my Aquariuses, and how are you doing? Okay, new moon in Gemini, just right around the corner. I think it's going to be a big one. So let's see, because we do, you know, there's a lot of interesting things with the planets. They're, they're not doing a lot of scattering but they're coming really close like one two three degrees apart so there's it, there's a lot of energies happening with that and Saturn in Aquarius is really it's really digging in deep now it's really digging in deep I feel that with this okay let's see higher power higher power Holy Spirit what do you want to say to our Aquariuses what do you want to say hold on <laughs> it's always something for you isn't it hold on uh, hold on, hold on. I don't know if that the ride's gonna the ride is starting or if it's just gonna get it's gonna be bumpy. I know we've had a couple of those types of readings for you, but let's see what we've got here. These two are reverse strong stuff. Let's see. First card is ten of water. Well, we love the ten of water. Tens transition, going going into another another um, cycle, another phase. So one is a new beginning, zero God source energy. Water is our cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy, fluid and emotional, very caring energy, um, sometimes a little bit too much. But the 10 of water is loving and caring. And it's saying, you know, I don't know if, if it's saying that Holy Spirit is wants you to know that you are loved and cared for, which you are. Remember at the end, I always say, know that you are loved. Well, that's coming from higher power, okay? So there is a very caring and loving energy coming towards you to help you through whatever it is that you need to help with. But this also could be about family. This also could be about coming together with and whoever that family might be. It could be your you know, your biological family, but it could also be your work family. It could also be the family you have made for yourself. But this has this just loving, you know, really everyone comes together. Everyone loves each other. There's just so much um, celebration, happiness with this energy. So this is a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. Here we go. Next card is 
the two of fire. Now, okay, so whatever's going on, the two's now crossroads, choices. Do I go this way? Do I go that way? Also coming together, fire energy is our Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Po you know, very passionate, very burning. But this, this, is like, this is like graduation time. This is you graduating into who you're supposed to be. This is you, you know, coming to terms with some of the things, some of the pieces, um, you know, that you've been waiting to have them put into your puzzle. Again, this is you coming to terms. This is your graduation energy. And that could be, you know, between this, your family, this could be a very supportive group that's helping you with this. This is because of the love that you're feeling. May, you know, I'm kind of feeling this has a lot of spiritual energy here too. Your connection, this is you being bolder. This is you having more confidence. This is you being able to say no, but also at the same time, when the opportunity is right, saying yes. So this is really a, like, a, like I said, this is you graduating. This is a, this could be a very spiritual graduation, a very ascension type of graduating, but it's you really stepping out and being bolder than you have ever been before, okay? So you've come into your own, new partnerships or contracts continue to move forward. Your last card reversed, the sun, the sun. Now, this does have a Leo energy, and remember, whenever we're in Aquarius, that you have the full moon is Leo, and whenever we're in Leo, the full moon is Aquarius, so you balance each other out. So this is a 1-9. One, 1 is a, again, that 1 in the 10 is, you know, what the, we talked about. 9 is, let's wrap it up, you have everything you need. Um, 1 plus 9 is a 10 again, bring it back to the 1 new beginnings, new start. So this weekend is going to be something very spectacular for you. I really don't know if this is family, loved ones, people that are supporting you, or if this is a spiritual connection with your higher power. It, and it could be a combination of all of those, okay? It's just that this is a really good place for you to be in graduation energy and you know and again it could be it could it could be from school but i just feel like you're stepping to the next you're stepping up your level you're stepping your game up you're going to the next level and that in itself could be very spiritual also okay and then we come to the sun the sun bright you know shines bright um this is archangel uriel uriel is very wise and also brings light to dark places and dark you know dark dark areas and dark spots and you know and then also is very sanitizing energy with this too so there is a lot of revealing with this energy there is a lot of brightness now you know going back to that beginning the introduction um you know this is definitely whatever this is with the um you know if this is the devil is there for you at all you are definitely confronting and facing and you are you you are standing very tall if that is if that's part of your you know general reading here too okay so the sun archangel uriel happy outcome brilliant new ideas that lead to success have confidence in yourself so this is one of those times that whatever's going on really you know you have to go for it my aquarius is you have to try uh, you know, this is just, it just feels like you've got, you've got all this stuff behind you, pushing you forward, you know, yeah, again, go for it, happy outcome, brilliant new ideas, something happening, the sun shining, the sun getting into those dark, you know, dark spots, and bringing light, bringing light to the dark too. Okay, let's see John Holland, Psychic Tarot and Oracle. Higher power, what do we have here for our... Aquariuses. Okay, so now we have an eight. Eight unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities, accelerated motion. Whatever is going on, it's going to happen very quickly for you. Things are happening. Things are happening for you, my Aquariuses, in a very positive, wonderful way. Wonderful way. Um, you know, trust that, that new moon, Gemini, your, you know, air energy with that. Trust that new moon. Put it out there. Be positive. Think things through. Card just fell. Hold on a second. But I love this. I love this one. You know, looking up, looking up at the stars. Things moving faster. So the wait is over. The wait is over. Okay, what crystal or energy for my Aquarius is? Peridot. Well-being, 
attracting money, good luck charm, healing heartbreak. So whatever this is, this is very positive. I love it when I love it when my Aquariuses get something like this. This is so good. A lot of times it's stop, go, stop, go, go, stop, stop, go. But this this is definitely full steam ahead. Go for it. Go for it energy. Okay. My Aquariuses, take a moment now and go for the buttons down here. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications. As always, my Aquariuses, know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.